Yeah, there have been quite a few questions about how to use uh, BSTEM for the uh, current assignment, Assignment 5, in uh, 2015. Um, first thing I'd like to mention is that the version that I originally posted, version 5.2 of BSTEM, seems to work fine, but some people, or at least one person, had a problem running it in uh, Office 2013. And so I found a newer version, uh, BSTEM 5.4, on uh, the USDA ARS uh, website, and I posted that onto the Moodle site. I would recommend you not use uh, BSTEM version 5.4 unless you have no other option. Main thing is, is that I have found that some of the default values for parameters that are given in version 5.4 are different than those in 5.2. And so you would expect to get some differences in answers. Now for this assignment, I don't expect you're going to get exactly the same results as I do. Uh, they should be close, especially if you're using version 5.2. Uh, but, I mean, what I want you to get most out of this is to learn something about the process that is going on. So anyway, I gave you, for this assignment, uh, a stream bank, the geometry of a stream bank, and uh, the properties of different layers. There are five layers plus a toe. And so I'm going to go through the process of uh, putting in the numbers for this. So if you look at the data that I gave, uh, we would be inputting the actual geometry, not using option B, but using option A to input the actual geometry. And for that geometry, we would be putting in uh, the uh, values that I'll be entering here. So I'll just populate the spreadsheet with these values. And you need to tell where the toe is, uh, top of the toe is located, and that's at that location right there, 3.95. The coordinate 3.95 and 0 0.57. Now, one thing that uh, I found is that it's good <coughs> to make sure that when you start a, a particular uh, series of calculations to have these two cells, the shear emergence elevation and the shear surface angle, both of those be uh, empty not zeros in them but empty. Alright so then we need to tell the uh, layer thicknesses so the top layer is 0 0.75 meters thick the next layer was 0 0.9 meters thick then we had 0 0.15 and then uh, 0 0.35 and I did find when I was running it if uh, the sum of the layers is not slightly thicker than the actual thickness then there can be an error I don't understand why so I just made this 0 0.40 the bottom layer even though it's only 0 0.35 thick so you get this error that says well the sum of the uh, thickness of the layers does not is not greater than um, the um, what the, the layers don't go below the uh, bottom of the toe is essentially what the uh, the error is telling. So by putting a value of 0 0.4 and having the elevation of the bottom layer base be minus 0 0.05, that will be below the elevation of the toe because the elevation of the toe is zero uh, according to column E here for row D um, of the input data for the geometry. All right, so we have uh, that information input. Then we also have to tell it about the length of the reach, which we said was 50 meters. The uh, stream slope is zero, it was a half a percent. The input uh, flow elevation is 1.2 meters, and then the duration is 24. Now, our, I, the total 
duration of the flow is 216 hours, but I thought we should do it in nine hour intervals because that way you can see the sequence of events that would lead to uh, slope failure. And so you'd learn something from that. So for the first part of the assignment, where there's no vegetation and there's no tow protection, no stream bank protection, we'll just do it in 24-hour uh, interval, intervals. Whereas when you have the tow protection or the root, uh, plant root uh, reinforcement of the, of the soil, in that case, uh, we would um, use the, or I'm recommending use the 216 hours total uh, duration because I think once you go through this nine times with the first part it's not necessary to do it again for the case where we got either tow protection, stream bank protection or uh, enhancement of the strength with the roots. Alright so once I've got this information in here we can click on view the bank so that's the information we gave for what the profile of the bank looks like. And I kind of recommend that each time you go through this process you run what the run bank geometry macro. That brings us to this uh, file here where we've got the uh, different layers and so we have to choose what the uh, properties are and according to the input, and I'll open that file up here, um, open up the uh, data for the material that's this file, Excel file that I put in there. Top layer is moderate salt, second layer is coarse rounded sand, third layer is resistant salt, fourth layer is erodible salt, and the fifth layer is fine rounded sand, and the tow material is fine rounded sand. So we've got moderate salt on the top, and we just scroll down, then uh, coarse rounded sand is right there, then um, resistant silt, that layer, then we've got erodible silt, and then fine rounded sand is the last bottom layer, or is the bottom layer. And then for the tow material, we assume that it's the same, it's uh, fine rounded sand, same as the bottom layer. Okay. When we put these names in here, the model is going to automatically choose the uh, default properties that are listed here in the table. So for any of the silts, it will use a friction angle of 30 degrees, cohesion force, cohesion force without any plant roots of 3.0, saturated unit weight of 18, and a uh, unsaturated friction angle of 15 degrees. Um, for the uh, rounded sand it will use these properties here so forth. So those are already put into the model as a result. Alright so now we go and I, here I'm going to recommend that when you do this these uh, 24 hour intervals that you write everything down. You do everything on 24 hour interval. Write it down because it's easy to forget what your last step was. So if we go to the bank model output, we've input the geometry, we've input the material properties for the uh, bank material. Go to this uh, layer here, or this uh, tab. We said that the water table is 0 0.95 meters below the uh, soil surface. So if we do that, then it automatically puts in what the mean water pressure is in each of the uh, um, in each one of the layers and those are in kilopascals. So the water table is indicated here by this blue triangle and the actual depth of water in the channel is indicated by this kind of uh, filled in uh, solid line to the right of the stream bank. Alright, you can see the layer uh, material characteristics are given here. Uh, it doesn't say moderately erodible or easily erodible and so on, but it just tells you what the textural properties are of each of those layers. 
All right, so now, right now, we're in the very beginning of the simulations, where you might think of it as being at the beginning of the first 24-hour period or the first day. We click on Run Bank Stability Model. It'll come up and ask you, do you want to insert a tension crack? Well, you'd only do that if you actually have field data to indicate what the tension crack properties are, or characteristics are. So we're not going to, we're going to just say no, because we don't have any other information. Click on that, and say no, and we get 1.20 as being the uh, factor of safety. Here we'll assume that the factor of safety is 1, or that failure will occur if the factor of safety is less than 1. So if it's 1 or greater, then we'll assume that it's, uh, um, that it's stable, even though here it says it's conditionally stable. For that case, then, there will be no change in the uh, slope or the bank characteristics. If it had failed, it would have failed right along this red line because that's the shear plane along which failure would have call, occurred and all this uh, material in this triangular area would have ended up at the bottom of the slope. So at this point, it's stable. The uh, uh, profile doesn't change. So then we need to determine at the end of the first 24-hour period how much toe erosion occurred. So we come in here to this file and um, <clears throat> the uh, rotability properties of each of these layers and the toe material are all given here in on this page at the top. So the critical shear stress that is necessary to just begin movement of uh, sand particles and the erodibility coefficient tells you how much erosion is occurring per unit force that's being applied over time to the uh, data is indicated, or I mean to the model is indicated there. So if we click on <coughs> run the toe erosion model, uh, we see some things happen over here on the right hand side in this little table and you need to write down the information that's in that table. It indicates how much erosion actually occurred and graphically or geometrically the, that's shown here by this red line over on the left hand side in the diagram. So we have the original slope profiles in black and then you got this little red area which is the new uh, uh, soil um, profile, stream bank pro profile with the toe after 24 hours of uh, water flowing down the channel. Now what we do is we save this eroded profile. Again, remember to write down all these numbers so you'll be able to go back later and be able to calculate how much total erosion occurred. Here we'll save this profile and if we come in here and we click on uh, bank geometry we can see that this geometry is different than what we had previously. I'll hit the run bank geometry macro again just to what I think is going to avoid any further problems down the road. And we go to the bank uh, output model you can see we have a different that different profile. We're going to test first to see after the 24-hour period of erosion, is the banks re still stable? It was 1.20 for a factor of safety. The depth of the water table is still the same as it was before. We hit uh, run bank stability model, and we get a factor of safety of 1.02. So it's really close to one, but strictly speaking, we'll consider that still to be stable. So at the uh, beginning of the second 24-hour period, the bank is stable we'll now have 24 hours of erosion and so we run the toe erosion model again and you can see that we get some more erosion again you need to make sure you write down these numbers we'll save this or we'll export this new profile if we click view bank you can see it's changed even more than it did than what we had previously so now at the end of uh, the second 24-hour period, that is at 48 hours, we um, have this much erosion that has occurred and we're going to test to see if the bank is still stable. So, now we get a value of 1.15 for the uh, stability. And uh, that doesn't seem to be correct to me, or at least that is not showing up being what I got before, so I'm not sure exactly why. Uh, but I'm going to just continue with that. So here we're assuming that this is uh, conditionally stable. 
or that it is stable. And now we're on the uh, third sequence of erosion. So at the beginning of the third day, it's still stable. We hit the uh, toe erosion model. We're going to export that. And we're going to test for the stability again. Okay, so this indicates now at the end of the third day that the bank is unstable. We've had three days of erosion. It took those three days to reach the point where now all that material that lies above this red line is going to fall off or slough off. And to uh, simulate that, we export that new failed profile. Now what you want to do is here you want to write down how much erosion is associated with that failed surface. So don't lose track of that. That's important for us to have. We click the uh, export new profile. If I view the bank, this is now a different profile than what we had before because all this bank material that was right in here has now s broken off or sloughed off the stream bank. We can go in there and we can now uh, rerun. Now this is that we just finished being at the end of uh, 72 hours, the third period. We're starting on the fourth period and at the beginning of this fourth period we're going to find out if the bank is stable. It should be stable at this point because we just had that one failure. Yes, it's stable. It's got a factor of safety of 1.32. Water table depth has not changed at all. So now we'll go over and we're going to erode. Get that much erosion. Export that. Get the new uh, bank. And then, uh, so now this is at the end of 96 hours. The third 24 hour period. We'll run the stream bank or run the bank stability model for this case it's still stable. Okay, so now at the end of uh, what is it? Uh, 120 hours after this, or this is uh, this is the erosion after the end of the fourth uh, erosion event, which should be, uh, or the fifth erosion event, the fish erosion period, that should be uh, 120 hours. Here, I'll export that profile and we'll again run the bank stability model. Barely uh, stable. Wrote it one more time. Again, we're going to uh, we're going to uh, see what happens. Okay, so we got the 120. This is at uh, after 100 and this is why I need to write it down because you get get confused after a while. And I haven't been writing these numbers down. Okay, 0.93. So this would lead again to a failure. You need to then save that one by exporting the new profile and go back and keep doing this in sequence up until a total of 216 hours. And I got, I had uh, three failures within that uh, 16 hour, or that 216 hour period. Uh, three mass uh, uh, sloughing or mass uh, erosion failures that occurred because of the stream bank uh, collapse. Okay, so I'm going to stop the video at that point and I'm going to come back and show you something about the uh